welcome to the 2020 year in review for the Real Estate Investment Group, the REIG. I'm Gio Aritas, the Principal Advisor for the REIG, and thank you for joining me today. I hope that you had it all had a good holiday season and a good end to what was for some a very difficult year. I wanted to take a moment to reach out to you and provide you with an update on what has been happening in my world this year and how that affects investments, real estate in general and in specific, and what new areas people are looking to put their money in the year to come. First, I'd like to say thanks to my clients and followers. 2020 was one of the best years we've had on record. Surprising to many that during a year when so much was going wrong, that people were still investing, buying, and selling real estate in 2020. With so much uncertainty, it was interesting myself to see how much activity there really was, most of which happened in the third and fourth quarters. But upon review, it really isn't hard to understand why. <clears throat> but let's rewind first and recap Q1 and Q2 2020. The year got off to a very good start. Financial and real estate markets were off and running. Economy was strong and prices were going up on nearly everything from consumables to residential and commercial real estate. Stock market was reaching all new highs and life was good. People were making more money and feeling confident in their spending. Money was still relatively cheap with no end in sight from the Fed keeping rates at modern historic lows. People were traveling, taking vacations, visiting Disneyland. People were buying more cars, more computers, and consuming more content. Life was good. Very good. And there was absolutely no reason to believe otherwise. But wait. Here, are almost, here we are almost 12 full months later, and pretty much none of that has changed. Aside from not being able to go to Disneyland, money is still cheap, velocity of rising real estate prices is still rising quickly, the stock market is at all-time highs and people are still spending. So how is that even possible? Well, folks, that is the question. And in order to understand it, and more importantly, to assemble a plan to navigate going forward, the real estate investor needs to understand how we got here and why. Along comes a pandemic. With the virus making a slow but steady appearance in late 2019, the American media didn't give it much airtime until almost the last minute. And this was a major reason why it seemed to come on quickly for Americans and why people were so upended and blindsided. This zoomed out 10,000 foot view is much easier to see as we have passed through the trees to now see the forest. In widespread panic, we learned that as a society, it is really, really easy to put everything to a complete stop that everything for life and business as we know it can stop so completely, so immediately, was a huge awakener for many. But for savvy real estate investors who saw this as an opportunity, it was a huge boon for assembling and executing a plan to navigate this pandemic and find the investment opportunities presenting themselves in real time. We had great success with this in 2020 with our clients. My inner core of close clients, all of whom are investors in either commercial, residential, or industrial, doing everything from buy and rent, cash flow models, or inventory acquisition for later fix and flips, 2020 was abound with opportunities. Once the slides subsided, which is around the middle of the end of Q2, so mid to late June, lenders dried up. Capital markets, especially the venture capital and angel markets, dried up fast. Hard money loans were almost non-existent in broad availability, and some of our clients who were buyers of 100 plus units were scrambling to find money, so they came to us. Meanwhile, real estate prices in New York, an area that the REIG has strong affiliate presence in, are getting decimated by the pandemic, with some reports showing that the absorption rate figure for rental properties in Manhattan is forecast at eight years. Yes. You read that right. You heard that right. Eight years. That means that the average time it will take for rental properties to become occupied to the pre-pandemic levels will take eight years. Manhattan will be hard-pressed to recover in the next 15 years from this. <clears throat> All right, what else? We saw hotel investors with appetites for casinos coming into the Las Vegas market. New projects that are slated to start taking place over the next 24 months has skyrocketed to very interesting levels, 
Our group was involved with two raises for hotel casinos on the Strip, and we are currently representing a raise for a water park zoo to come to Las Vegas, along with several industrial logistic new builds, several apartment complex new builds, and a new home development track. And we, all represent, we also represent a new golf entertainment concept that is a rival for Top Golf, all of which we are currently raising for. We have affiliates around the country that are building new housing developments, logistics centers, and industrial projects everywhere. Yes, new builds, that's correct. In a time of unprecedented hardship and all-time high panic levels, we are seeing a ton of new build action across all asset classes. And Las Vegas is an exceptionally strong market right now. You heard that right, the market here for new construction projects is booming behind the scenes. Infrastructure in Las Vegas has not stopped throughout the pandemic, and that's been a major sign for us that growth here continues even through everything that is happening. The market here for new construction projects is booming behind the scenes. The smart money is pouring into Las Vegas from everywhere, mainly because while Q3, Q4 2019 and Q1 2020 euphoria was hitting, people were already fleeing high-tax states like California and Oregon, New York and Illinois, among many others, and they were all coming to Las Vegas. Industry was already fleeing California in droves, setting up shops in Reno and in Las Vegas. Kingman, Arizona is becoming a destination point for UPS, FedEx, and others for logistics centers for expanded distribution, making the 15, the 95 North and South, and the I-11 corridor explode, causing Southern Vegas and Henderson, Nevada on the South side, and then Northern Las Vegas on the 95 North side to explode as well, since they're the first stops as you enter and exit town. Businesses are flooding to Nevada for its tax-friendly environment, and those companies are also bringing residents with them. That hasn't changed. In fact, it's gotten busier during 2020. As pandemic conditions, joblessness, and other effects impede people from living and growing, Nevada's low cost of living and low tax structure for business and personal is appealing. And it's a great time to make the move, especially when there's no reason or no ability to stay somewhere that is now too expensive to live in. Nevada is hot. Our housing market is going up and has seen new highs month over month. Prices are now averaging $200 a square foot and, and over. With the exception of only a few areas in town that are ripe for redevelopment or gentrification. Average home prices in Las Vegas are now over 300000 However, still a far cry from the national home average, which in my book is set by the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac jumbo loan limits, starting at approximately 550000 Which means that Las Vegas still has a lot of upside to get to the average national, widely accepted insurable loan value buoyed by the jumbo loan limit amount. But that's not all that's hot. <clears throat> Commercial property has been flying off the shelf. Almost every deal I've seen this year has been all cash. Tons of money from California is coming out and snatching up everything available. Commercial properties that are even in less popular areas are not sitting long and are fetching near market prices. Industrial is another big area we are seeing a ton of action with this year. In fact, we successfully raised for two projects which garnered our investors 20% returns for a 24-month hold with a minimum of $500,000 investments, which are putting new logistical industry builds into the south end of our town. This 20% program has been gaining widespread interest within our investor network, and it's been a huge boon for investors that are looking for a guaranteed 20% return backed by Class A industry real, industrial real estate. These are not these are all not only great opportunities that our investors took advantage of this year, but they're also signals of strength of our market through this pandemic. But how can this be? And this is a question that almost every person I speak with asks me. How can we be in this kind of an environment amidst a modern day historical pandemic amidst us, a grueling political climate, a decimated jobs market, high employment around the corner, government bailouts of insignificant amounts and on the threshold of changing political regimes amidst a backdrop of catastrophic national debt being imposed. You have to admit, it's a very obtuse scenario. For those of you who have been my followers, clients, and friends from back in 2007-2010 era, you probably know what I'm about to say. You've heard me say it many times. But this is what a bubble looks like. 
The thing is that this is not a bubble that anyone is noticing because it doesn't look like the last bubble. This is where my experience as an index futures trader comes in handy. Back in my days when I ran our index future programs, I learned how to forecast major events in the market by watching, watching a correlation of fundamental indicators. I later memorialized those indicators in an algorithm that forecasts the markets with amazing accuracy, making our investors a 36% return in the years of 2007 and 2008, years where the next nearest fund program was losing 12%. <clears throat> it was at that time that I learned how married the real estate and financial markets were and that bubbles are just easier to spot when you're watching fundamentals and the technicals and not just the technicals. You know, mainstream media tends to focus more on the technicals and less on the fundamentals when they report, for one, because technicals are usually more exciting to report on. But watching the fundamentals of the markets is where you can really see the motion of the committed money. And that is why watching the fundamentals, most of which I've detailed in the commentary above, is pointing to a bubble. So, when and how much? And how long? And wouldn't it be great to have that crystal ball? But in a way we do. If you're looking at the fundamentals, it's easier to see. So here's what you showed up for today. Here's what I see happening in the months to come and where I see the best opportunities. First of all, continued low interest rates and infusion of government debt in the market as capital will keep the economy teetering on a thin layer of ice, which at some point in the near future, likely middle to the end of Q2 or before, will result in a popping of the bubble, which will produce more mostly distressed inventory to come into the market, which will, by the simple laws of supply and demand, force prices down for the short term. I do not see prices taking more than a 12 to 14% hit at most, and most likely will simmer out around an average of 10% across the board. Now, that's for real estate that is backed by mortgages that are either owned cash, um, I'm sorry, properties that are either owned cash or that are mortgages in a performing loan. There will be some deals and discounts, but it won't be as widespread as in the last market crash of the 2009 era. Now, that price drop could take two to three quarters to even itself out. That means that any property owners who are teetering on losing their property or going into default should sell now before that window starts to, occur, starts to occur. If you wait too long, you could get caught holding the property for four plus quarters before pricing regains momentum again. During this time, it would be prudent for sellers who are not in trouble to hold their properties as long as they are cash flowing or that the carrying costs are not too much stress on their income. Buyers, you should be preparing to buy. If you find a deal and there are starting to become some, the expected window is described uh, as I just mentioned. That means that if you're looking to buy residential, you should start your searches now and be prepared to pull the trigger when something comes up. That means getting your money and finances together, getting your lenders in place, which include hard money relationships, bridge loans, construction loans, etc. I suggest you do this now. We can help with this. We have relationships with all sorts of lenders, including conventional lenders and non-conventional lenders that offer a range of hard money and other options. For the investors, you'll want to consider broadening your spectrum of business models. Consider different options because many new models are entering the market daily. and We get a lot that pass over my desk. For example, our clients have done everything from Series A and Series D investment opportunities, which are available in the new golf entertainment space that is set to take a large bite out of the $2 billion and growing golf entertainment industry. Other interesting options are investing in the 20% return with 24 month hold on industrial properties secured by long-term, often Class A leases backed by the property. Commercial buildings are also an option and are great for portfolios looking to invest in opportunity zones and with the pandemic taking hold, there are some casino opportunities out there as well. Our clients have also have interest in a water park zoo that's expanding its concept into Las Vegas. Our clients have commercial properties for new retail and high traffic underserved markets in Nevada. And we have many options for many different appetites. We have another client from a large family office that loves buying radio tower properties and 100 plus room apartment complexes. If you're looking to invest, you should schedule a call with me to discover your options. For our luxury buyers, if you're looking to purchase a luxury home, Las Vegas is at the top of the list for value. According to our last study, properties over a million here 
are the most undervalued of all asset classes right now. Now that's going to change as more Californians continue to leave their overvalued market and come here to drive prices up, but there's still a strong enough inventory and new home luxury builds that it's still undervalued to its neighbors. So talk to me if you're considering a luxury purchase and we can get you started on that process. Now finally, we are proud to say that it's been a great year. And we're proud to say that we helped many clients find investments that fit their family office needs. With my network of over 18,000 and growing, we've been finding a lot of opportunities among our clients by sharing their offerings with our network. We're proud to say that we've made over 100 successful introductions and initiated over 40 new deals this year, spanning residential, commercial, industrial, and associated real estate investments. We are thankful to all of you who interact, communicate with us, and trust us with your projects and deals. We're proud to have made so many introductions this year, and we're looking forward to increasing that number in 2021. So please reach out if you have a deal that you're looking to fund, or if you wish to find a deal to fund, or if you wish to find an investment opportunity in the many facets of real estate that our clients have. My wish is to all of you for a happy, healthy, and blessed new year. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to talking to you.